back. Hi. Hello and welcome to Knock Knock Hi. Hello and welcome. Both things. Both Hello, are true. Welcome. Greetings. Good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome to Knock Knock High. We are the Glock and Fleckens. I'm Will Flannery, also known as Dr. Glock and Flecken. I'm Kristen Flannery, also known as Lady Glock and Flecken. We're excited to have you join us today. Uh, we are talking with a veterinarian. Yes. And Dr. Sarah Boston. She's also a comedian. That's right. I am I am quite partial to people who do both things, medicine and comedy. Yeah, she's you guys like, had a lot in common. She's more of uh, going like the straight stand up route, which is yeah. really impressive. Yeah, because like, that's that's hard to do. Like I even like I think about oh should I just should I start like going back and doing more like traditional stand up comedy? I don't know if my stuff would translate. No, yeah, it'd be interesting I, I to hear know. like you know. It sounds scary and hard. I don't know if I'd want to do it at this point. But she's she's doing it, and she's she's done like actual training, taking classes, yeah. and and done things at like Second City, and yeah, uh, just she's doing I, some formal learning in it. It's exactly, pretty cool. Exactly, yeah. So very impressive. Uh, she's a veterinary surgical oncologist, um, and uh, up in Canada, talked about talked about Canada a little bit. Yep. Yep. Tried to clear up some of the some of the language barrier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's <laughs> such a huge <laughs> language barrier. There's, we just say things a little bit differently, like uh, on the medicine side of things, like the different terminology and things. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we had a great conversation with her. And but before we get to that, mm. uh, update on our yeah exciting news on our um, uh, the the rest of the Glockenfleck and adventure that yeah. we're on. We're doing a live show. That's you right. You may have heard about it. You may have seen we post about it on social media. And uh, as as of this airing, it's about a month away. Yes. And it's a it's a stage show. It'll be at the improv yes. theaters. In three different improv theaters over Southern the course California. of three days. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the Southern California and Irvine, Oxnard, and Ontario. Ontario. Yep. And it's a little bit different than the podcast, right? Like we're talking about... Um, our story. It's been kind yeah. of a crazy story. A lot of people know our backstory, but a lot of people don't. Um, and even if you do know it, uh, you haven't heard it this way. That's right. It's going to be pretty, pretty fun. It's kind of a tragic comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Memoir stage show. You will <laughs> laugh and cry. You will do both. Do we call it a tragedy at the same time? Tromedy? <laughs> it's a tromedy. Kind of like, I, I kind of like that. It is. Yeah. It's it's a, it's a little bit yeah. Trump. Mostly comedy, but you know, we don't pull any punches. We've been through some stuff. I just don't know how many characters I can fit into it. I'm trying. Mm. But you know, it's it's also um we're we're in the process of writing and we're still writing it now. Yeah. We're almost done with the writing process. I think it'll be real interesting to see how your characters get incorporated to a story about our lives. That'll be that'll be well, fun. Well, you know, I draw a lot of inspiration from the things that we've done together. So mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> but it's gonna be a lot of fun. And uh, tickets are already uh, are already selling. Yep. And uh, no, quickly exciting. in a couple of the locations. That means we so actually have to do it. We got to do it. People and, people and are spending money. They're spending money to see us, and I just I'm excited. I love just seeing the actual people. Yeah. That you know like yeah. the stuff that we do. Because usually we're just alone here in this room doing yeah. this podcast, talking to the computer screen, so you doing I your skits, talking to yourself. I'm just so excited to to really to get in front of people and you know we get to do that whenever we do like keynote speeches and stuff but I don't know this will this one will be a little more fun you know a little yeah. more interactive and and it's it's, it, it'll be and a good it's time. like a blank canvas that we could just do anything we want mm. it's so exciting ah it's fun so you should be nervous we're planning a lot of very special things for the show and um, and so uh, you know check it out and I already know people are gonna be like oh, why don't you come to of you know this town or elsewhere. that town come to new york come to chicago come to uh, oklahoma i don't well, know all the put places. pressure on all the people you know in southern california to purchase a <laughs> ticket because if it does well there we yes. can go on a tour this is like a little uh it's a little a, test run it's a test run uh just to, to to see how it goes and if if it goes gangbusters and everybody likes it and it's you know then we'll we'll take it elsewhere that's the goal for yeah, sure so be fun um, all right, should we get to Dr. Sarah Boston? Let's do it. All right, here we go. Hey, Will, do you know what my favorite December holiday is? Uh, Christmas? Nope. Hanukkah? No. 
our anniversary. No, it's Wife and Death live at the Improv. Oh, that is a good holiday. Yeah, we're telling our amazing story live in person. And we have a meet and greet before every show. You can get a photo with us. We can, we'd love to meet you December 9th, 10th, and 11th in Southern California. We'll be at the Improv in Irvine, Ontario, and Oxnard. You can buy tickets and check out dates, glockenflecken.com slash live. We also have a special offer for our Patreon members. That's right. All the Glock flock out there. Free meet and greet with your normal ticket. Just tell us your username and you're in. See you next month. All right, we are here with Dr. Sarah Boston. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's so great to be here. Yeah, and and we've talked before. Now I, I I appeared on your podcast that you just started not too long ago, and uh, and so now you're doing ours. And um, I got to ask you, uh, well, actually, first of all, before we start recording, you mentioned that today is is Canadian Thanksgiving. Yes. What is that <laughs> exactly? Well, it's a Monday in October. I think it's more harvest related <laughs> than the American. Is it pilgrim yeah. related? And it's not. It's different. <laughs> I think you know. It's a more of a harvest time, which is. I don't know. It's a. It's a. It's a long weekend. Yeah. I, and well, people eat turkey. That's, that's what counts, right? It's a long. Okay. Weekend. Yeah. You do eat turkey. I don't okay, eat turkey myself because I'm a vegetarian, so I don't. And I'm. I missed it because I just got back from Portugal, so I missed having Thanksgiving, which. Oh. So it's very sorry. sad for my husband. It's his favorite holiday. I sometimes can do without everyone talking about the moistness of the bird. Mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I can do without that. So this is the yeah. most important part of it, though. Wait, <laughs> yes. so do you do you get do you get do you also celebrate like American Thanksgiving? <laughs> well, my husband just... would like to. No, we don't do that. We don't get the four okay. day. And I, you know, I lived in Florida for um, five years, so I experienced oh, gotcha. what that is all right. about. It's much more significant holiday in the in the states. But and no okay. Black Friday. You don't. You well, don't... some Canadian stores like to do that, but it's not. No one gets okay. killed. <laughs> <laughs> no one's getting trampled over a gotcha. television. <laughs> what? Wait. What is it? Then they're like a box box day. Boxer boxing day. day. Boxing day. Boxing it's the day, day after Christmas. Yes. Okay. All right. I uh, we were uh, I think. Growing up, we went to Vancouver once, and I, I think it was over Christmas, and we were there on Boxing Day, and it was, seemed like a great day. Lots of lots of good sales, right? Yeah, they've kind is of that, put is, a they put a little bit of a because people would take all their crap back. That's usually what people do. <laughs> yeah, day, all the stuff they want. So so like they don't want it, so they take it back, and then they try to have the sales of it. They've sort of like Christmas Day is Unboxing Day, oh, and then oh. the day you return it all is Boxing Day. Put it back in. Yeah, I don't want this is stuff. That, yeah. Is that a bit or is that real? That's a bit. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm just going with it. I'm yes anding her. I'm like, yeah, that's what it is. That sounds good. Yeah. I worked retail once um, on Boxing Day and it was, I, was like, oh, I think I was like was 18. Awful. It was like one of the worst days. I still remember because I broke the till. I had I was giving mm. someone change with a penny and it in slow motion, like I could see it going and then it, <laughs> it fell into the till and broke the till. So we had to do hand receipts on Boxing Day. And it was oh, your fault boy. at Benetton, and, that, and it was my fault. Yeah, sorry, Benetton. And, and, sorry about that. And that was that. Was that your last day at Benetton? <laughs> no, but it didn't end well. I'll just say. <laughs> my time. I say Benetton, like I know what that is. Yeah. I have no idea what that is. Some kind of oh, Canadian department store. No, it's European. Oh, it's like a fancy okay. store. Yeah. He's not cultured. Is the thing. <laughs> oh, oh, you know what Benetton is. Benetton is. I know Kristen no. knows. You don't no? even know. I don't. I didn't <laughs> even know that one. Oh. Yeah. Sadly, oh, well, that's See, okay. I got to start calling you out on some of these yeah, things yeah, yeah. that you call no, me. No, really, on. what the deal is is um, until very recently, we've been quite poor because of med school, grad school, children, right? Like we're not yeah. that far out from all of that, so so we're playing catch up now. Yeah, we're, we're still. I'm not. I will never be cultured, though. Right. W- well, no. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't just, buy it's, culture. It's not, it's not, <laughs> right. Exactly. It's not, not in it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Sarah, I got to ask you. So, um, how do you, do you feel like you have cornered the uh, veterinarian comedian market? Mm. Um, is it is it just you out there, or is it a lonely place? Ooh, and are not, you an internet not... comedian veterinarian, or do you? you... Know, I, I I dabbled in the TikTok for a bit, um, okay. but I not I wasn't persistent enough. And sometimes I would go on TikTok, and then I just felt bad about humanity and then I Life. didn't want to be yeah. and so so but I was for a while like 
reading one star veterinary reviews um, while drinking by the fire. And I, <laughs> oh no, it, people thought they were just mine. Like people, they were like, it's okay, Dr. Boston, you're a good vet. I was like, no, these aren't mine. These are just ones I right. would find. Oh, these, that was your content was reading one star. I just star read vet them. But people are so oh, that's mean. a good idea. Yeah, it just it got a bit depressing because people are so yeah. mean to veterinarians. You guys have no idea. Oh, so really, yeah. Well, tell us about it. Well, why? Typically, the one star reviews I curated were like it was usually financially related. So where we get into conflict with clients is when they can't afford to pay and they don't have insurance, and then they just get very angry. And, and I don't know if that happens with physicians, but they'll usually say things like, this is a very common, like, if you cared about animals, you would do this for free. Um, mm. They get very oh, upset. Wow. And it's a very emotionally charged situation because you've got a sick pet. And of course, every veterinarian, I, you know, I think I can say this, every veterinarian loves animals and wants to help animals, but you, but we can't do it yeah. for free because things cost money, right? So right. Americans understand that a little more. Than Canadians, yeah. yeah, we're like, no, healthcare is free. I'm like, it, it not for dogs, <laughs> <laughs> right? That would be amazing. I that would be great. Yeah, if we, that was we got true. we got our own problems on the human side of things. Oh, yeah, over here, we might have better yeah. healthcare for dogs than humans in America. <laughs> I'm not yes, sure. I would say potentially, maybe yeah. less stressful. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So, so you're so, I, yeah, I want to hear. Uh, do you do you have uh, other veterinarians you can like uh, yeah. you can bounce ideas off of uh, you know there's material? Not, yeah, there's not very many of us, um, but we actually. So I got a call from a, a group in Edmonton, a Edmonton Small Animal Vet Association. That's in Alberta, and they were like, "Hey, Sarah, can you do an hour of comedy?" Which I was like, uh, I don't have my one hour like Netflix yeah. special like ready. That's a lot. That's, right. That's, that's a, a lot. lot. I mean, I probably could. I've done like 35 minutes. I probably could, but I don't know mm -hmm. if it'd be good <laughs> for an hour. So sure. um, I just brought in people that I knew and it was amazing. Like, um, so there is a comedian. He's actually on the, he's my first uh, episode of Co-Medicine, my podcast. And he is a wonderfully successful Canadian comedian um, named Ted Morris. So he came in and he's done like JFL and Winnipeg comedy and Halifax. He's been on TV. So he's he's a much more successful comedian yeah. than I am. Uh, I mean, I'm just I have aspirations to be like him, but he's been right. he's been right. doing this for a long time. He's absolutely hilarious. So he he was there, Caroline Brookfield, who's a veterinarian in Calgary, who does keynote speaking and stand-up comedy, and then a veterinary technician, which is like a veterinary nurse uh, who's in British Columbia named Valina Toskov. So we like made a festival and we decided it was like the first ever oh, veterinary cool. comedy festival. Um, yeah, but then there's a couple veterinarians in the in the states that do stand up, but it's not a huge pool, which is why which is why co-medicine is <laughs> for yeah. all healthcare professionals that do comedy because otherwise my podcast would be over now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, a veterinarian uh, comedy festival. Yeah, that's what we called it. I mean, just yeah, yeah. That's what we when, said. When did this yeah. and this already happen? It, it was in May. Yeah, it was just How for was the it? conference. Well, it was fun. Oh, it was super fun. It was just yeah. in a conference hall. Whatever. We had a good, we had a great time. Well, there was dogs there. That, yeah, that, you had dogs. <laughs> that's good. Were the dogs funny? They were cute. They were cute. Yeah, they were. I that's think they were Belinda's matters. dogs. Yeah. I, I think I think all all uh, live events would be better if you just bring in some dogs. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. They just put people in a better mood. Most people, not everyone likes dogs, but yeah. you know, like a therapy dog or something that's really like friendly and calm. Would it work with cats? No. You don't think so? Mm, I the right don't think cat. So. There are some cats that rock veterinary conferences. Just random. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, people who are in the exhibitions, like or the exhibiting booths, not the exhibitions. You know what I mean? They're in the booths and yeah, they'll have yeah. a cat, but it has to be a certain type of cat. You know, mm. not every cat is going to be. What okay makes a good that. conference cat? <laughs> a cat that is, you know, people like they have a cat and they're like, he's more like a dog. Those cats. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the, the friendly kind that the like dog people. Like cats. The dog cat. The, yeah. Yeah. The uh, dog cats. Yeah. Cat dog. Isn't that, wasn't that a cartoon? Uh, I think there was a. Jeez, I don't know. <laughs> I think it was we a Nickelodeon dog. Uh, dog man. Uh, no. Cat, cat kid. <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. All right. So I want to hear a little bit more about, about your transition from being like a practicing veterinarian. I mean, you're still practicing. Yeah. Right. You're yeah. still doing your veterinarian thing, but also making that decision, that jump into comedy. I want to, okay. I want to hear a little bit about 
All about right. that. Um, okay. Why? Why did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it just kind of evolved, but I had thyroid cancer. Uh, I'm fine, but I had thyroid cancer, and I ended up. Um, it, it was actually I was a little frustrated with the Canadian healthcare system because things were going kind of slow. And I was like, oh, no, because I'm a surgical oncologist. So I was like, no, that is a <laughs> that is a thyroid carcinoma. My husband's a large animal veterinarian. I ultrasounded my neck because I couldn't get I couldn't get an ultrasound for like two weeks. And I was like, well, oh, wow. let's just see what's going on here. And I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that <laughs> really were you wow. tempted to just take it out yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, th so this is at your at your office at your place? No, this work? is in our house. Because so my husband is he's a large animal veterinarian, so they use portable ultrasound for breeding like horses and cows. Oh man! And now, the, I all the just... emergency all the emergency physicians are just salivating over, <laughs> they over want, having a. Do they want? They want that? An, oh, they want one in their house. They just yeah. they want to sleep with an ultrasound. I can in, get in them that. Them. There's like really good. <laughs> I mean, that's so they easy. Love just get a they probe love and hook it to your cell phone. It's fine. It's easy. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't cost anything now. They can all have that. So, okay. So the, uh, this was a brand new ultrasound machine. I just want to clarify that because usually this ultrasound probe goes in the rectum of a cow yeah. or horse. Okay. Good <laughs> so clarification. This then. had not been, he had it and I'm like, bring it home. Cause I want to see what's going on in my neck. <laughs> and because uh, I felt the mass there. And um, yeah, I was like, oh, that's wow. that's what that is. So anyway, I just started writing because it was like everything was so delayed. So Canadian healthcare, you know, everyone's covered. That's important. Mm, really slow, though. <laughs> so nothing yeah. was going fast enough for me. So I just started writing. Mm -hmm. Ended up kind of like having a, I don't know, I was like, is this a blog? Is this a book? I don't know what this is. But ended up like honestly having a chance meeting with a published, like a publisher, <laughs> This never happened. It was like a gala. We were raising money for the cancer center. I'm sitting beside actually a famous author. I didn't know who he was though. He's like, I'm Noah. And I was like, I'm Sarah. And I, no idea. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he's Noah Richler. Like he's literally famous, famous author, nicest man ever. And then um, I read some of what I'd written because we were raising money for cancer, for our cancer center. And then he's like, his wife was president of a the really good publishing house. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Ended up writing the stars a book. aligned. Yeah. It was weird, but I, it makes people hate me a bit because I'm like, oh, I don't have an agent. I just, you know, yeah. met a guy. So, <laughs> so the book's funny. It's about um, having cancer, but also um, treating animals with cancer. Hilarious. Of, of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. So funny. Right. Um, so, but I realized I love comedy writing. And then I just, mm -hmm. that kind of put me on the path of like taking improv classes. And then I took a stand up class. And then I got very hooked on stand up. And then, I don't know, the pandemic happened and I realized that I could take um, college classes, like a college course at Humber College for two years and get a diploma in comedy. And that's when I reached out to you, Will. Yeah. Because I was like, that's right. I was like, we oh talked. my God, there's this guy. He's a doctor. He's a cancer survivor. And he does comedy. I was like, I got to talk to that guy. Yeah. You guys have we a lot in common. We have a lot in common. So, yeah. And you emailed me back and you talked to me and I was like, hey, like I'm <laughs> thinking of doing this. And you're like... <laughs> I mean, it's not the reason I did it, but it was good to have encouragement and like someone in the yeah. space. That's what oh, I yeah. Like, yeah. And so not, not that many of us, you know, in the grand I scheme I think of there things. might be two. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> that are also cancer survivors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> the Venn yeah, diagrams exactly. get yeah. very Yeah. Small. It's like Will and Sarah. So, um, yeah. And then I went to college for two years and I were, I still was working and I've been working like less. <laughs> right. I, I intend to get a job. I keep telling my husband you, that it's, <laughs> I, I finished school at the end of April. I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to get a job. And then yeah. I still don't have a job, but I'm just locoming. So. Okay. Was that, did that answer your question at all? Yeah, No, it did. Okay. I, and, and I just also want to point out that see, like to, to Kristen that Sarah is much more, like she has a degree in comedy. Yeah. Like I'm, well, I'm just kind of faking it. It's a and, diploma. It's a diploma. Well, what, whatever. What's, it's the same. I, I don't know. You know, whatever. You know, is that like a certificate here? It's legitimate. I wonder. Okay. It's oh, something it's you legit. can frame oh. on your wall, right? Yeah. And you go get your you comedy document. job. document. Yeah. Do you have it next to your, your what was it, DVM degree? Or mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what you call it. Yeah, them, it's a but, DVM. Um, it's yeah. a DVM, right? Yeah. Is, that, is it right next, like comedy, veterinarian? No. You should have it right next to each other I, on your wall. I should. I haven't, I haven't put up anything because I, I usually had it at, like at work and I don't have a job yeah so that's oh okay, <laughs> oh, oh, okay. all right I guess that's true I have, this. I have on that. this this is all I need look I have this on my desk there 
Oh, oh it's, there it says, you go. As nameplate that says I'm kind of a big deal. Someone I work with gave me that, and it makes me laugh. So it's on my desk. But anyway, I do well, have a diploma. Yeah. In comedy. That's, that's more than you have. That's more than I have. I have like 300 TikToks is what I have. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah how many TikToks does it take to make a degree? Um, I don't know. I think it's more I, about I, that, the followers. I think I think you probably get maybe. an honorary. In fact. Well, it's but you've done a lot more hour like you have like like credit hours that you get, you know, taking classes. Right. My like if you add up all the the amount of hours that I have of like video comedy, it's like mm -hmm. six <laughs> yeah, that's true because it's two minute increments. Is that so? Yeah, but to also, make those I think takes time. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, it takes makes it takes a lot of time. I also I don't think you have learned comedy from anybody. Um, like I mean, you just do things. Hey, I, I don't know. I I do what I what I think is funny, which is probably what you do. Do you draw on a lot of your your veterinary background whenever you're doing stand up? I you put writing your your yeah, sets and everything. I used to have that totally separate because I felt like you know, something I kind of struggled. I was like, oh, it's not professional and people won't think I'm professional. So I was just like, you know, middle-aged lady <laughs> comedy. That was my shtick. Uh, but then I just, it's so much a part of me being a veterinarian that it was kind of hard to not talk about it. And I realized like, even though people yeah. write really mean reviews about us, but if you just get up in front of a crowd and go, I'm a veterinarian, people are like, oh, like it, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a secret weapon that i use because yeah. most people like they like veterinarians uh, often the next thing is they're like my vet cost me so much money blah 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 you know but <laughs> mm. i don't have to listen to that if i'm on stage they just go oh she's a vet she's a nice lady so right. it instantly endears right. you to the audience well because you're nice good. to animals i guess right like you care enough about animals to become a vet that's that's a quick heuristic for is this person like a decent person well, it also, nice it also makes makes you unique, right? I mean, that's they probably haven't heard many people get up in, on a stage at a comedy club and s talk about their experiences as a veterinarian. So it gives you that little edge. I mean, there's probably a handful of middle-aged women that do middle-aged women comedy, yeah. right? Yeah, but, there is. Uh, people are but... definitely stepping on my perimenopause <laughs> toes right now. I was like, no. <laughs> I'm well, talking you, about night sweats. Stop it. You, <laughs> you've, you've clearly got a lot of um, of content here because you you actually I I had you brainstorm some good stories about your time as a veterinarian, uh, and some of them I was just looking reading through some of these, and just laughing at the prompts uh, of like things your cl clients will say during rectal exams on their dog. <laughs> yeah. Like you is... didn't elaborate on that for me. You just, you just threw that out there. So, so now, now we you, have to now know. Now you got to tell me all about it. Okay. Well, I, again, I well, you, not now because you're dealing with the eyes. So hopefully you're not doing rectal exams <laughs> because that would be a problem. Well, some... I yes, yes. <laughs> I I would get I would get uh, probably reported to the board of medicine there. <laughs> It was so unusual. You kind of have to so, do rectal exams on our dog, though, after every walk. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, you, oh well, Klingon I, situation. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. It's, it's a, he's a standard oh, poodle. He's. Oh. I feel like he's got colitis like every other time. week. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, I have to wipe oh, his ass after he, I can help you with after that. After he takes a dump. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk okay, later. We'll talk, talk about that later. later. About, <laughs> about my dog's, my dog's GI This issues. is me. I'm we'll... always like, I hate when people ask for advice. And then if it's someone I yeah. know, I'm like, I can help you. Do you want my help? Yeah. I, it's like I so weird. You. I don't know what is You can ask me. him an eyeball question. Yeah. I, don't, I can tell you. I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have vet insurance, though. So oh, we'll, just, well, we know. should talk about that, too. <laughs> I had a botched LASIK experience two years ago. Oh, no. I did. On a dog? No, on no, her. Oh, oh. Do you think have dog LASIK? No. <laughs> there are there are veterinary ophthalmologists, but we don't. They I don't know. Do I'm that. aware. You're aware. Okay, that's good. Oh yeah, I, our I, dog has ophthalmological problems. Oh, he's got. Oh. He's had a surgery. We he's... don't. We need to stop oh. talking about our dog. That's yeah. not the purpose of this podcast. Okay. But I do have questions about my dog later for you. Yeah, um, fine. No, no worries. I can help. <laughs> I, I'll help as much as I can. Although I'm a surgical oncologist, so sometimes things get out of my wheelhouse, and then I'm just like, I don't know. And then people are like, Are you even a vet? I'm like, No, not really. Man, that, <laughs> I, see, we have so much in common. I know. That I, I just say the same thing because like, I'm an eyeball doctor and don't know yeah. anything about the human body, the rest of the human yeah, body. Yeah, you're just so. like just the eyeballs. Um, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> rectal exams. Yes, Here's the thing that people say exams. to veterinarians: We're doing a rectal exam, and people get very uncomfortable 
even though like okay. I, I don't know why and they feel the need to like <laughs> be a part of what you're doing so so okay aren't you gonna buy him dinner first well okay <laughs> okay um, it's a dog All yeah right. it's i'm like wh- yeah uh oh he he likes it like his daddy oh like okay. a man would say oh, that no. Oh, no. oh no i know it's awful um don't forget to use the lube doc and like don't forget to cut what? his balls. Those are those are okay, some of my. I'm gonna take a wild <laughs> guess here that all of these come from men. Yeah, that's a great guess, Kristen. It is. It is None correct. of this sounds like what a woman would no, say. No, occasionally women have they get a bit uncomfortable, but it's usually men. And I'm like, I'm not gonna rectal you. It's okay. Like, just it's your right. dog, and it's actually really important to rectal dogs as part of their physical exam because they get cancer of their anal glands. Um, which oh. we sometimes called anal sacs, and then people get confused <laughs> because <laughs> it sounds like anal sacs. Yeah, anal sacs. Anal sacs. sacs. Well, that's, I that's try to glands. say anal glands because otherwise, it's just leads to confusion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's not a mistake sense. you want to make. <laughs> yeah, it's potential for confusion. I think I think our dog is hearing us yeah, talk about he's anal. Talking. Yeah, he's like, I'm he's... not comfortable with this. It's <laughs> like, why? Aren't you gonna buy are me you... dinner first? Woof. <laughs> <laughs> so, he I wouldn't ask dog. us to cup his balls because he has none. He doesn't have any. So. Just like his daddy. <laughs> that's right. Oh my god, that's another true. thing we have in common. I was like, yeah. that wasn't even. That was not even figurative. That was literal. That's just a fact. That's another a, thing we have in common. Yes. We both found our own cancer. That's yeah. another thing right? we have in common. Yes, I found yes. my cancer. I, you know what? They're I found very my different cancer locations, but, with know. expensive <laughs> neck cream. <laughs> oh, just rubbing it in. You're like, hmm, what's yeah. That? I was like, did you, oh, did you that's... get it at Benetton? No, I got it at Shoppers Drug Mart, which you don't know where that is. But it's, it's anyway, I have no idea. fancy, like anti aging neck cream, very expensive. And I would put it because, okay, I'm going to backtrack. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. I don't, I don't even know if this is a good story. You can edit it out if you don't like it. But when I was like 14, <laughs> I went to this department store with my my friend because we were going to take a modeling class. And they they pulled me aside <laughs> and they told me I wasn't pretty enough or tall enough to ever be a model, which, which is true. Mm. It's true. But, it, but when you're 14, you're like, uh, but they let me stay <laughs> for the class <laughs> as a charity. I don't oh, know. No. And these women who are like, I mean... You know, I thought they were older, but they probably were in their late 30s. They they were talking about you have to put cream on your face twice a day. And they're like, and don't forget your neck. And then I looked at their necks. They were very crepey. And you you once you let your neck get crepey, there's nothing. So I from then I like religiously put neck like neck cream on. Yeah. Twice a <laughs> you day. Say cre- did you say crepey? Uh, 14. Yeah, crepey. Crepey. Cre- 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 like crepey like skin. A crepe, like oh, a, not like, like a, a turkey. breakfast crepe. Oh, I thought I thought it was just like the the Canadian version of creepy. No, no. like no, okay. like like a turkey okay. neck. Like you know, you oh, see gotcha. celebrities oh, okay. and gotcha. they're like, all like, this is like, like crepe this. Paper? Yeah. Okay. And okay, then their gotcha. necks are bad. I mean, look I'm, at it. I'm with you now. Look at what I'm saying. You can't <laughs> fix the neck. So I got obsessed with like that, and then because I put it on and then I touch things for a living. So like I was like putting on my neck and I was like, oh, that's that's a thyroid carcinoma. That's how right. I found it. Dang. Anyway, th- I'm just saying as a PSA, women should touch their neck. There you go. Every day. Put yeah, on your, I, your neck cream and yeah. look for and look for see, and I, see, and for a while, I would tell people, like, men, you have to touch your balls. Yeah. But, like, I don't need to tell men to do that. But yeah. Like, they're, they they're do it in public. It. They do it. Yeah. It's just it's just something we do. So. Yeah. But that's, yeah. that's a good, it's a good, uh, um, you know, PSA. recommendation. Yeah. 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 Touch your necks, I yeah. guess. <laughs> All right, I want you to tell me now about. I'm just gonna have some random questions for you. Tell awesome. me about a uh, blocked cat urethras. Oof. Okay. Like the story, <laughs> or just yes. randomly? Or, okay. Whatever. Whatever you want to tell me about well, blocked take cat. Take that and yes, and well, okay. Well, first I'm of all, why why does a cat urethra get blocked? Because that's okay. That, so like what I what did, happens there? I did what we call primary care or general practice for three years. So I dealt with that a lot. And then I, I deal with it not that much now. It's more like if I'm in a specialty hospital and there's an emergency clinic attached, then I see the cats come in. Cause it's an emergency as you would imagine if you can't pee yeah, or poo, it's emergency, right? So right. Uh, they, they block, it's usually dietary or stress, but they get crystals in their bladder mm. and they'll get a little plug in their urethra. And actually, interestingly, <laughs> During the pandemic, 
because cats are used to having their space and then everyone was home and in their in their space cats were blocking oh, like, no. <laughs> like so many cats were blocking because no one was leaving them alone that's how i felt too yeah. as someone who was working from home before the pandemic was your year through a block all the sudden like, all my people are home all the time yeah like, nope. ah. no space how many crystals did you get in your urethra? i didn't get any crystals thankfully <laughs> okay no so okay so my story was yeah. this was when i was in i was in primary care and it was a long time ago so it was things were different then but um like we kind of put up with a lot more. I'm, I know I sound kind of fuddy duddy, but like just when I tell this story, any young veterinarian will be like, I'm going to quit on the spot. But it just was, that, it was a different time. So it was a different time. Yes. I'm working in Edmonton. I'm in primary care and there is an emergency clinic in, in the city and it's Christmas and we're shutting down for like four or five days. And my husband, he loves Thanksgiving and Christmas. So he, he wants to go see his family because we're living out West, which is fine. And then my, my boss just announced I was on call for Christmas, but it wasn't really on call. Like it was just, there was boarding patients and I just had to be around. So it was a bit, it was a bit lame because it meant I spent Christmas by myself, but I, whatever. Um, because veterinarians, we just accept, yeah. like we just accept, you know, we're like, Oh, my life sucks. I accept, I accept yeah, so, that. So many similarities. Just like doctors. Just, yeah. just like, like, doctors. Doctors. Just like, like Oh, right. my life is going to suck. So, but yeah. anyway, everyone is like, okay, it's December 24th. And like, I'm like, you're going home, you're going to the emergency clinic. Like, I'm just, I'm sorting everything out. And my boss is on the phone talking to what turns out to be her sister going, no, bring him, bring him here. You should bring him here. And it's her, her sister is in Calgary. Her cat has blocked. It's in a hospital. It's fine. Probably that vet is trying to clear out their hospital too. So anyway, <laughs> the cat is coming, is coming to this like it's her practice. She's the boss. It's her sister. She's bringing it here. And I'm like, Oh, she'll probably take care of it. No, I, <laughs> so I'm oh. taking care of this cat. His name's fuzzy. I'm taking care of fuzzy. And she's just like, whatever. So taking care of fuzzy. I can't leave his catheter in for like five days and he seems fine. So I pulled his catheter on Christmas morning. I had to go in and see him and he's doing fine. I come back like for his evening check and he's, he's reblocked. Wow. So they're in the, they're in their litter box or crying. It's awful. It's painful. Right. And I can feel his bladder. Yeah. He can't pee. So I called my boss. There's no one on call. Like this normally would be something would go to an emergency hospital. So it's just a very, it's a tricky, it's tricky. Right. So I called and I'm like, Hey, fuzzy's blocked. And she, she just like ripped me one. She's like, well, you should be able to do that yourself. I have 12 people here for dinner. I'm like, Oh, you could have invited me, but that's okay. Whatever. So <laughs> it's fine. Cause I don't eat Turkey as you know. So I am anesthetizing the cat by myself, which is not, not great. Like we do that stuff. It's not great. So I'm just anesthetizing the cat and I'm like, I'm trying to unblock his yeah. urethra. And then she comes storming in and she's really mad at me. Like I, anyway, she's mad Ugh. and she's like, uh, you should be. anyway, she like grabbed his bladder. Like I think to, cause she didn't believe me. Mm -hmm. she, he's on the table. He is like lying on his, we would say that in ventral recumbency. I don't know if you, is that, is that how you guys speak? Uh, uh, no, I have his, no on idea his belly, <laughs> his butt's hanging ventral, off the table. I know, I know ventral. I know what, I know okay. what that word means. So, so I'm, yeah. I'm at his back end anyway, trying to get okay. his catheter in his, in his urethra. And then she comes and palpates his bladder. And like, as she's doing that, I'm putting the catheter in. And then she goes, Oh, I can't really feel his bladder. And then she literally left. She's like, well, I got to go. And she left. And so I'm like putting a catheter in. Anyway. Well, she's got 12 people at home. So I, I, right. uh, for dinner. That moist right? turkey is not going to serve right. itself. Mm. So she's gone. I the anesthetized cat. And like, again, like there are emergency hospitals, but like a lot of veterinarians in the back in the day, this is in the late 90s, we would just take patients home with us, which is bonkers. Oh, man. Bonkers. So I take this cat home, but like he's so azotemic. He yeah. he doesn't really recover. Like it, I, it was like a weekend at Bernie's. Like he's just, I'm like, this is, oh, no. this is oh, so bad. Man. And I, I have no one, like the technicians aren't on call. It's Christmas. It's So I just am like yeah. giving him fluids, trying to drain us. I'm like, oh my God. So then I went, I took him back to the hospital. The You're 20th. giving him fluids, but he can't pee? Well, he's peeing into his abdomen and there's a catheter in there. So yeah. okay. some piece coming out. <laughs> sort it's, of it's a yeah. suboptimal situation. Okay. <laughs> I'm not proud of what happened. So but then on Boxing Day. Well, you did Day, the best you could. But I did the best. And I was like, I mean, this is I think I was out one year. I'm not making yeah, excuses, yeah. but yeah. I am like a new grad. And right. and so I have this cat. 
So then I go back on the 26th, which we call Boxing Day, and I find a technician who will actually help me. So we do a contrast study. His bladder's ruptured. So I phone my boss. Oh, man. And I was like, hey, just so you know, when you said you couldn't feel his bladder, <laughs> that's because you <laughs> ruptured it. And, and she goes, do I have to come in? And I go, no. Oh, my God. I know. It's crazy. So I was like, <laughs> oh, I go, no, I just thought you might want to let your sister know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I broke your cat's bladder. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm like, we're going to take him to surgery right now. So anyway, we took him to surgery. I fixed his bladder. And actually, he did great. Yeah. And then, good. and no one thanked me. Like, <laughs> no one, oh man. No one thanked me. But the, the kind of good news is, like, I was in primary care, but I really wanted to be a surgeon. And I wasn't successful getting in the match right away. And then that year, like, in March. So like three months later I matched and then I was like, bye. So yeah. it was fine. And yeah, it was fine. It all worked out. It, oh you know, my goodness. Character building. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. That happened. I had no idea. Yeah. On Christmas day. Yeah. No less. Yeah. Well, that's, that's wasn't probably what you had in mind for celebrating Christmas. No, I just but... wanted to like watch a movie and I mean, I'm not very Christmassy, so that part was okay. Yeah, well. But uh, the other thing that veterinarians do, which um, I don't know if doctors do this, but if you don't have children, everyone's like, "Oh, you don't, yeah, you don't, you don't need count. Christmas, like you don't count." I'm like, <laughs> "What? Right? I don't know. I might want to do something like I, you know, with right. my husband yeah. or my friends or my dog. I don't know. Like it's." <laughs> It's still a holiday. It's still a holiday. Single people well, get holidays. If, if if Fuzzy could have thanked you, Fuzzy would have. He did in his own you, way. Sure. And actually, interestingly, <laughs> during the pandemic, I realized how much I'm like, I'm so patient focused, because yeah, because yeah, Fuzzy did thank me, and and uh, people do or don't thank you, like the owner or the yeah. client. They they do or they don't, or they're great or they're terrible or they're whatever but the animals or they are make always jokes the same. about about or they make sort of vaguely sexual or... jokes about <laughs> right <laughs> well let's yeah. let's take a let's take a break all right we'll be right back hey Kristen, how do i look oh almost like a real doctor I, I feel so natural with a stethoscope uh, around my uh, neck uh, maybe i'll wear one around the eye clinic oh let's see what people say I, i don't know they, i might look a little off well, but you know this isn't just any stethoscope oh what is it this is the echo core 500 digital stethoscope with three lead ecg wow yeah it's got 40 times noise amplification noise cancellation three audio filter modes a full color display have you ever yeah. seen that fancy a no color i display, haven't a color display on a stethoscope it's incredible it's amazing uh, and it's also echo's best sounding digital stethoscope it provides the most precise sound through its innovative audio engineering design we have a special offer for our u.s listeners visit echohealth.com slash kkh and use code knock 50 to experience echo's core 500 digital stethoscope technology that's eko health slash KKH and use NOC50 to get a 75-day risk-free trial and free case and free shipping with this exclusive offer. Hey, Kristen, have you ever heard of eyelid mites? I try not to they think look about like this. So, gosh, look get your bouquet of eyelid mites out of my face. Look at these little cute eyelid mites. Yeah. They're not usually this big. Thank goodness. But you know what they do? What? They cause itchy, red, irritated eyelids. Mm, I don't want that. A lot of people don't know that it's actually sometimes demodex mites. That's horrifying. Yeah, they cause demodex blepharitis. But don't get freaked out, Kristen. Get checked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To find more information, go to eyelidcheck.com. Again, that's E-Y-E-L-I-D check.com to get more information about demodex blepharitis. All right, we are back with Dr. Sarah Boston. Um, I think Chris and I are still thinking about the weekend at Bernie's cat. <laughs> um, that was very descriptive. Um, I, I like it because we know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. You know? um, and we can laugh about it because the cat's okay. The cat is okay. Yeah, yeah. and it was a long time ago. The cat is probably not right. okay now. Well, now that's it's how, <laughs> right. That's how long it's run its, it's course. Been. Yes, <laughs> true. <laughs> that's good. Let's let's definitely try to bring the mood down. Sorry. A little bit. Well, let's, he, I, let's I we need to cat. remind each other of the mortality of, of <laughs> everyone, the imminent mortality of everything, all of us, and everyone. We, yeah. Everyone. Um, well, okay, Sarah. I have a game that we can play for a few minutes here. Okay. okay. 
Um, so we try to come up with something that's re related somewhat to what you do, but this one isn't that related. But anyway, whatever. We're going to do it. <laughs> so right. I'm going to set up the game, and uh, Sarah, you and Kristen are going are gonna to play this. It's called the DMV. So I, I don't know. It, DVM. DVM. DVM? Well, or DMV. It's the department. It. You know what the DMV is. I, I don't know what they call yeah, it. Yeah, I don't DMV know if it's in, the same in Canada. In Canada. Department no. of Motor Vehicles. Yeah, it, I know what you mean. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, gotcha. All right. But did you pick that because like, of DVM? I feel dumb because like we're it's like we're talking in different languages, but we're not. It's all English. And yeah. I just have to, you know, I can stop adjust. embarrassing myself I can here. Adjust anyway. Because I lived I lived stateside for five years. Yeah. She's bilingual. Oh, well, I'm bilingual that's English. True. That's right. <laughs> all right. So the DMV. So all right, here's the game. There's a, a glitch in the matrix. Okay. And the DVM is being conflated with the DMV. All right. Nobody can get the two separate. Okay. This okay. game of riddles blends transportation and, and medicine. Okay. Ooh, okay. All right. Veterinary medicine. Your job is to determine what anatomical structure the transportation riddle is referencing. Ooh. So I feel that, very stressed right it. now. I just would like to I say. I know. This is Do intense. you feel stressed, Kristen? <laughs> I Are feel we like playing Will's together? To... Are we on the same team? I think you know we're. You I think we're can... competing. No, well, <laughs> you can. Let's just see. Who... Let's see if you can get it. Okay, like, I'm not going to get it. Let's see if it even I'm works. I'm, I'm going to embarrass okay. myself. People are going to be like, right. "She's not smart," but I'll try. So these are these are transportation riddles. Okay, you can just say we don't have that in Canada. And you're trying yeah, to the determine. Americans will believe you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's All true. All right, we'll do. We'll do. Here's here's one just as an example. As an example, okay. Here's the puzzle: the crossroads of perception. Oh, optic the optic nerve. chiasma. Oh, yeah, that's o more optic correct. Optic chiasm, that's right. The junction of the brain and the eyes. Right. So just, yeah, the optic nerves I was going cross. And... You got it, right, exactly. Yeah, so see, you guys can do this. Okay, okay, All we right. got this, Kristen. Right, here we go. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I'm still stressed. All right, Transporta <laughs> transportation <laughs> riddle number okay. two. Okay. The route of respiration. Uh, The route. The route. Of respiration. You know, I'm not in medicine. This airway could I don't be think a I am. highway. This airway <laughs> trachea? could be a high trachea. Oh, there you okay. go. You got it. The trachea. Okay. People were just the yelling route. at their the dashboards of listening in their cars oh. just now. We don't say right, here route here. Just saying. So the root. The root. The root. The root. But, but you got to say root. it Canadian. Route. So root. what would that be? The root. Root. The root. root. Yeah, it would just be extra. Root. Root. Yeah. The root. <laughs> it's different languages. <laughs> All right. Puzzle three. Roundabout reflexes. Roundaboot. Roundaboot reflexes. <laughs> Synapsis? Is that what you're looking for? No. There's a clue. Reflexes. Circles of equilibrium. Is this the vestibular system? Close. Okay. Yes, it's a part uh, of it. It's a part of it. You're almost there. I don't I didn't learn these things. I did, but um, I'm, I'm struggling. Semicircular canals. Oh, oh, of course. Of course. Semicircular canals. Okay, that was a hard one. Right, nice. Here's one. Here's one. Carriage of clots. Carriage of clots. Carriage being the transportation. Yes. Yes. You say carriage. Do you guys have carriages? Yes. <laughs> I can't Do use we? that excuse every time. We like, don't have. I don't <laughs> have that here. <laughs> carriage. Right. Carriage of clots. Um. Clots would travel in a blood vessel. Okay. What would a clot in a blood vessel be called? Thrombus? A thrombus. Okay. There you go. How's that thrombus. a carriage? I don't... Isn't okay. that just a clot? This is, uh, whatever. <laughs> what? you know. uh, let's, not, let's, not, let's not think about uh, it too much here. Chris and I are challenging right. that one. Okay. Okay. All right. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. All right. Here's, a, here's another blood vessel related one. Okay. All right. Okay. Tiny transit thoroughfare. Tiny transit thoroughfare. It's the smallest of avenues. Oh, capillary. Um, capillary. Capillary. There you go. Nice. Or hey, capillary. Well I knew that one. Oh, oh, is that what you say? Capillary. Yeah. You Sorry. don't say centimeter, do you? No, I think Americans say centimeter. Actually, they don't. Only, they... only, only pretentious surgeons say centimeter. <laughs> oh, really? No, we don't. Say yes. That. We don't. Yes, say yes. That. I had, I have had uh, maybe two surgeons that I have encountered centimeter. in my career. It's a centimeter. centimeter. Oh, but they gross. Say... <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> but they say centimeter. Centimeter. No, but some people don't correct. even know. I, I've found like American vet students, they didn't even know, like, if I, if I was getting them to do stapling, 
at the end. Yeah. I would be like, put them a centimeter apart. And they were like, yeah, how somewhere far between that? like <laughs> 0.2 and six <laughs> centimeters. I have no idea. I was like, oh, dear. Yeah. Okay. I had, I had another um, attending once. Uh, <laughs> it was a, I think it was actually maybe a vascular surgeon. I don't know. Said um, uh, de, in a casual conversation, debris mall. Oh, um, that's awesome. <laughs> debris mall. Debris, yeah, that's debris yeah. Mall. just drop that. This was like just some like person from I don't know. Not French. Yeah. Like Iowa. Right. You yeah. Know? Right. Just like like a, a totally normal American. Like everything else, not in an accent, just yeah. but just throughout just that one. Debris I love mall. that. That yeah. That, that reminds... tells you everything you need to know about that person. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when people go to that... Nicaragua and they say everything normal and then they just go like Nicaragua. Like, and I'm like, what are you <laughs> yeah. doing? Why yeah. are you doing that? It's weird. Right. Or people that will just drop a Barcelona. Yeah. Bar- <laughs> 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 All right. Let's do, let's do two more. Okay. Two more. Okay. All right. Puzzle. Uh, next puzzle. I don't know what number we're on. Puzzle. Uh, his uh, neuro highway. Nerve. Spine. Be more specific. Mm. uh dendrite axon oh axon you got it okay oh. i was gonna give you a clue but you didn't need it i all was right. in the spine um, i was like <laughs> I was in the spinal cord i don't know i was <laughs> right. i had some neuroscience i did have that oh here we go here we go here we go cardiac checkpoint cardiac checkpoint um the here. sa node nope uh checkpoint it's it is a node do you know of any other nodes do they have no? Do they have cardiac yeah, nodes? Yeah, we have in, all like, this, animal? but this is far from my wheelhouse. I don't know. AV <laughs> node? I don't yeah. know. AV node. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Atrioventricular node. Got it. Uh, bonus point, Sarah. Uh, do you do you know what the AV node does? Are you going to embarrass me on? It's a cardiac checkpoint. I yeah, don't know. What totes, it, it checks the point I, of the cardiac. What it does. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I'm asking for myself. <laughs> he doesn't know either. I honestly it's don't even know. None of the three of us I, know. Okay. You know. The last time I seriously <laughs> thought about like cardiac conduction here i don't no. think about it very well much. clearly i mean yours doesn't even work you think about it so that's, infrequently that's true that's true yeah. well I'm, I'm actually going to get more shit than anybody else because we send patients for cardiac clearance prior to cataract surgery and that makes mm. people upset yeah oh, really like lots of extra work that's unnecessary well, you know, who's upset as as the patient or the no it's you know it's uh it's a it's a point of contention between ophthalmologists and like primary care doctors and cardiologists um we're getting into a whole can of worms here but uh mm-hmm. uh because in order to do a, <laughs> a a surgery like cataract surgery we have to make sure they're safe for minimal sedation and so uh um uh, we always we blame it on mainly it's like the regulations of the surgery centers that we're operating at. So we have to they have to make sure that the patient is healthy enough for this thing. And so if they have cardiac issues or other medical issues, sometimes we'll send them to their doctor and say, hey, can you sign this form so that we can show it to the surgery center and they'll let us do surgery. They don't like doing that because it's extra work and it's really kind of not something. It's pointless. That, uh, it's, 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 yeah. But these the are part. old people, right? They well, generally my patients are in their sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. So you might need to be a little more careful. Yeah, you might need to. But anyway, it's just a it's a thing. And um so the the running joke about ophthalmologists is that we don't know anything about anything outside of eyes. But that's not a heart. joke. That's it's a actually fact. reality. Okay. All right. Uh, somewhat. Yes. In somewhat. my experience with my N of one here, that's just true. <laughs> all right. That was the DMV. Wow. Slash DVM. Um, uh, let's take a little break okay. and we'll come back and we'll wrap up here. All right. We are back. Uh, so Sarah, um, before we wrap up here, uh, do you, uh, do you have any veterinary ophthalmology knowledge you'd like to share with us? Oh. I didn't warn you that I was going to ask mm. you this before I just did it. Do you, because I love, obviously, I like, oh, I know. Maybe eyeballs. some melanomas. Well, we in see the mel- eyeball. We see melanomas in the eye. Do you yeah. see, do you see any see, eye, that's what eye I'm tumors? Saying. Yep. We see yeah. melanomas in the iris. Um, we see retrobulbar masses. So that's when I get into that area. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Um, so you Other remove knowledge. eyes. You do enucleations. Yes, and excenterations. What was that one? 
That's, those just, are tough. Everything comes yeah. out. Yeah. I do more accentuations yeah. than enucleations. What's the difference? Yeah. So, well, uh, Sarah, why don't do you... Do I want to know? Well, I regret this. Just enucleation, and I don't even... you're just taking out the eye, and I would right. imagine yeah. in a human... Maybe you try to put something in there, but in a dog, we don't yes. usually do that. And then, but an excentration is like, if it's a tumor, you got to take like bigger margins to take a whole bunch of tissue. So you're kind of down into the orbit. You're like basically mm. removing like the all orbital the muscles contents. and yes. all the, the yeah. muscle, everything that's in the orbit goes. Yes. And I guess so, I've just never thought about what else is in the orbit. I guess that makes sense. Eyeball. That makes sense that yeah. you would do that for, for animal eye tumors because yeah, the reason we would just do it enucleation is again we preserve the eye muscles and so we put an implant in there yeah we suture the muscles yeah. to the implant so that there's maybe a little bit of movement yeah. Of, yeah. of the implant so it's it's advantageous so to, it's just it's for aesthetics more than anything else and in animals we don't really care about yeah. aesthetics but in people they're not as worried about that right but yes you just want to save save the animal right yeah so. and then hmm. oh yeah and i do a procedure that i bet you don't do maybe you do Ooh. no i bet you don't for like eyelid tumors, you can use their lip. We call it a lip to lid, where you like make a flap out of their lip and rotate it to make a new eyelid. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, that's when cool. I dabble Weird. around the eye. <laughs> that that's that <laughs> sounds more than dabbling. That's that's so pretty legit. I can that's, get in yeah. there. Yeah. Or maxillary yeah, cool. tumors. So we do a big maxillary tumor. We try to save the eye. Yeah. So we will. Um, I mean, we. I I don't personally do this, but ophthalmologists, some ophthalmologists do this, where we'll take a soft palate and use it to do grafts on the eyelid for different reasons. If if there's a lot of scarring and you need to, you know, expand the the space in the eyelid or you know do some kind of fancy eyelid surgery, we'll take we'll take grafts from like the soft palate and sometimes buccal mucosa and stuff. So. Yeah, that's, there's a little bit of overlap there. Yeah. Kristen, you're not you're not into this? No, no, doesn't no. like okay, surgery well, talk. Maybe we'll just have surgery talk on our own <laughs> at some point. <laughs> uh, to me, this all sounds like Frankenstein. Like you you just enjoy <laughs> slicing and dicing and I yeah. It's oh, enjoyable. Yeah. I'm getting a little a little it is. Sorry. It, is. it is enjoyable. Do you uh, here's my last question for all you. Right. Would you if you ever st- if you started to really make it big in comedy? Like yeah. you, say you had like a hit Netflix special, yeah. Would you just give up? Would you give up the veterinary world? Oh, see, I ask people that question too. Um, mm-hmm. you I think know what you I asked me that. Challenging? Yeah. yeah, I probably did. <laughs> you know what I find is challenging. This is a challenge. Like to be really good at comedy, you have to spend so many hours focusing on that, and then it's right. like you sort of have that question in your mind of like, how good could I get? And then you don't know unless you really put a lot of effort into it. So that's why I right. don't have a job right now. But um, I, I, <laughs> I love I love being a veterinarian. I love doing surgery. So I think I'll always do some. Um, yeah. There's I've had moments where I less love it. <laughs> there's less love that, for it at times. That would be the case with anything, though, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Where like on those weeks, if you'd ask me, I'd be like, no, you know, but. <laughs> I'm in a place right now where I just, I get a lot of joy still out of uh, helping animals and I focus on that and um, whatever else is just noise. And uh, yeah, so I think I still always, always do that. Um, And then, you know, three years from now, like Netflix special be like, no, that's no, I don't do that. No, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's those one star reviews that, that (laughs) really really just push you away from, no, I'm sure you're not getting any of those No. Um, not at all. Uh, do, you, like, do, you, do you read your own reviews? Um, some like not really. I there's a lot of complaining going on right now, like uh, to our specialty boards because yeah. a, a pandemic made everyone unhinged, and so I just was dealing with that. And it was just the most frivolous <laughs> complaint. It was about money, and and it was yeah. really horrible. And it took three years for it because our I think the complaints for our provincial association went up four hundred percent. And um, oh my gosh, yeah. So it took them three years to. I actually don't even know the outcome. Uh, it's done. I, they, they're, they're like, we will send you the decisions and reasons document in a few months, and that will outline the decisions <laughs> and the reasons. I'm like, can you just tell me? But I think it's fine. <laughs> I'm okay. just going to assume it's fine because it seems like it's gone quiet on that front. So, Good. yeah, the case of, like, this dog had one suture left in, and they made a huge complaint to our board. I was like, wow, you could just you could have just told me. We could have just removed it. It would have been fine. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, people... So yeah, that I do get some of that a little bit, not a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
think pretty much best any not kind to of... read your own things on the internet. I, I, think. I actually actively avoid any like Google. I wish there was a Yelp. job though. I, I don't look at them. I don't want to look at them. You don't they need like a yeah. like a Jonathan that will read that stuff for you and just like distill it down to what's actually constructive or productive to think about, well, and then just get rid of all the all the rest. So we have a we have a way of of having people give reviews internally to our practice and that's more helpful like patients can our oh, patients can like leave feel. a review with with our admin our front desk like we have them like write reviews and like and that's that's really helpful feedback um but some of that stuff i mean i, I don't think it's as productive to like you know just have a bunch of random stuff online right yeah if you're leaving a review you know, at the office with the people, you're probably going to be more of a polite human about it than right. if you're it, just leaving it anonymously on the internet. Yeah, I, I just think, uh, you know, maybe. having an actual person <laughs> and name behind it, it's probably a little bit better. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, no, people, I, I've, I think the complaints to our boards have just turned into Google reviews, just unhinged Google oh, reviews. Gosh. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I took, I'm actually, oh, I shouldn't, I don't want to say this. I'm planning on making a complaint. <laughs> to my board because they they this person wrote such a mean letter it was very unhinged and it said that dr boston and her entire team disgust me and it was very abusive and i was like mm. no our, we shouldn't be accepting that type of language like you can complain yeah. but you have to be professional right. but our board is like we can't bleh. and i was like no that's not okay because yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of mental health problems in my profession right now i don't think we can just let random yeah. people abuse veterinarians but anyway that's a whole other yeah. Story. yeah save it for next time or never yep. i don't know i don't know if we want to talk about that <laughs> it's too depressing <laughs> all right well let's um uh, so before we go uh, i have a fan story that we're going to listen to is that we're going to um read here so uh this is a um a story sent in by our one of our listeners so this comes from d and actually you know d didn't even send a story it's a limerick oh. about volcanoes Ooh. well what you need to know is that will requested limericks at one point as like a throwaway oh i did i forgot oh. yeah that i did that. i know okay all right so this is a this so is a someone limerick. has has <clears throat> obliged here we go there once was a volcano named oh man there once was a volcano named F fagradalsval <laughs> whose eruption was quite the spectacle it sent lava and ash flying high in the sky, and now it's a tourist attraction. I don't is that think a that's a limerick. Well, Sorry, okay, D. so little context you left yeah. out is, is D asked Google's AI program Bard to write a limerick oh, about volcanoes. Oh, that would have helped. That was, oh. a, that was an AI-generated yes. limerick. Okay, AI <laughs> fail. So, it would have okay. made a lot more sense if we had all known that. <laughs> Sorry, D. All I right. criticized D unnecessarily. I, I probably, yeah, sorry, D. That was a <laughs> Google's AI program. Bard wrote that limerick. Yeah. Uh, keep trying, Bard. Yeah. Not great. Yeah, getting there, but not there yet. But feel free to send us uh, your your stories. Knock knock hi at human dash content dot com. So Sarah, tell us uh, again, kind of where we can find you, what you're working on, what you're you know, plug all your things for okay, us. Okay, all the things. Uh, well, I wrote a book. If people would like to read about it, uh, it's called Lucky Dog, How Being a Veterinarian Saved My Life. Um, it's been awesome. out for like nine years now, but I think people still pick it up and they like it. A lot of people take it to the doctor's office with them. That's what I get. A lot of feedback. <laughs> a lot of cancer patients like to read that because it makes them laugh. So, which is actually <laughs> probably the best feedback I could ever, ever have. Um, so, yeah, I would love it. It was a bestseller in Canada, but did not quite make it to didn't that quite make status it. in the U.S. So. That'd be cool if people want to read that, if, especially people who are going through thyroid cancer. I think it's helpful. Um, oh, yeah. It's about dogs, too. And uh, co-medicine, which I don't know how these yes. dates are all going to shake out, but oh, Dr. Will Flannery is a guest on co-medicine. I'm, I'm obsessed right. with my podcast. I didn't know it was so fun to be a podcast host. I mean, you, you guys know this, but I, yeah. I, I'm like literally obsessed. Uh, so co-medicine is when I bring on healthcare professionals, uh, veterinary or, or or human healthcare, and uh, that are also comedians, which getting to meet all That's these people great. in the Venn diagram has been amazing. Um, I'm on Instagram, yeah. Dr. Sarah Boston, and my website's Dr. Sarah Boston. So that's how to find me. Awesome. 
and I'm in Canada. Yeah, yeah I'm at, and I perform at Yuck Yucks. <laughs> and my address is no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> definitely, definitely check out the that Co Medicine podcast. That was a lot of fun when we 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 recorded yeah. a while back. So um, how many people are comedians and healthcare? workers of some kind like do I, you have I a hope, pretty deep I hope there's a lot so that your podcast can keep going <laughs> yeah. for a while I, I'm like oh maybe the rules will get laxer and laxer I'll be like because there's a yeah. guy he's a veterinarian and he's like a cartoonist and I'm like he's like yeah you know he's well, like I works. don't really count I'm like at some point you might count hey. um yeah, yeah. <laughs> come back in season yeah. three <laughs> exactly <Yeah. laughs> I am going through my list and um some of the more famous ones not well actually you're very famous and you got back to me but some of the other more famous ones have not responded yet but it's just right, time I've, just a matter of time we, we we probably have some of the similar people on that list that haven't responded oh to really us, so yeah you know it happens but yeah i don't you keep trying come on. yeah you have some of we have like our producers who just keep keep uh you know emailing and emailing until they say yes yeah. i'm yeah. trying not to make a dog pun here but <laughs> a dog's there's pun? one right there like a dog on a bone like oh. a dog on a bone there you go. Well, let's leave it at that, huh? okay. shall we? Sarah, thank you so much for ha- for uh, joining us. It's been a pleasure. And we got to talk again soon. We could talk about all the things that Kristen didn't want to hear about. Yeah, surgery. Yeah, but- like lips for eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. A lip Thanks for lip. having me. A little lip to <laughs> lip. Right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Take care. Well, Kristen, did you get all your... your- answer your questions answered about animals did i have a bunch of questions about animals no i don't think you did okay yeah <laughs> i just wasn't thinking of any if we if we didn't have a dog mm-hmm. say we had to get a pet but it wasn't it couldn't be a dog or a cat mm. i'm just thinking about all those exotic animals yeah which one would you choose does a goldfish count <laughs> God, <it's> so boring <laughs> come on look i don't like did pets you... living in my home like, remember when we you had, had a roommate? We in had outdoor college? pets. Remember when you had a roommate in college who had like some kind of some kind of reptile? Oh, I've repressed this. At, at, at oh, the I house, I barely remember, remember that? that. Yeah, I think it was an iguana. An iguana? That sounds that would be a good People one. People have that. I mean, I know there's that's not like that unusual, but I am not. I'm not a fan. You'd probably be okay with like a reptile. Nope. Nope. What? It's okay. Our daughter right. wants a snake. Oh, well, we got a pet snake. We got to get a snake. I, no, not doing that. I I can't do no? that. Okay, I guess goldfish it is. Anyway, if you have any ideas of what pet we should get that's not a dog or a cat, you can let us know. We'd love to hear your thoughts. I have enough things to keep alive as it is. <laughs> There's lots of ways to hit us up. You're email not that us. easy to to maintain, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that's right. You can email us knock knock high at human contentcom You can visit, 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 visit us on all of the social media networks. You can hang out with us and our human content podcast family on Instagram and TikTok at human content pods. Thank you to all the wonderful listeners leaving feedback and reviews. Uh, you know, we maybe mentioned a, a reviews a little a couple times on the on the show, and uh, and we love reviews. Yeah. Yeah. We Good like reviews. feedback. We need. It's helpful. We need them. We need the feedback. We like to know what you like, what Absolutely. you don't like. Help us make it better and more enjoyable. If you subscribe and comment on your favorite podcasting app or on YouTube, we can give you a shout out like today at my clever handle. My clever handle clever. on YouTube said, I love your podcast. As a rapidly aging woman, I find the more I interact with medical personnel, the more I need the info you so freely disseminate. Even the anecdotal stuff is helpful. Thank you both. And special thanks to Dr. Will for granting your lady such respect. She certainly deserves it. I agree. Well, th- thank you. <laughs> I think if you didn't grant me respect, I wouldn't be your lady. But <laughs> it's, it's a good point. I <laughs> treat your lady with respect my standards full video episodes of every week on my youtube channel at d glock and flecken lots of cool perks over on patreon we got one of those uh bonus episodes where we react to medical shows and movies you can hang out with other members of the knock knock high community we are there and active and talking and commenting and just there early ad free episode access interactive q a live stream events and much more patreon.com slash glock and flecken or go to glock and speaking of patreon community perks New member shout out, Jackie S, Lauren T, Try N, Grace, Nicole R, Ashley K, Lanny N, Cherish H, Susanna F, JJ H. 
Lots of new members. Lots of new members. Welcome. All Hello. Right. Yeah. Happy to have you. Also, as always, shout out to the Jonathans. We have Patrick Lucia C, Sharon S, Omar Edward K, Stephen G, Jonathan F, Marion W, Mr. Granddaddy, Caitlin C, Brianna L, Dr. J, Rockbox, Chaver W, Leah D, KL, Rachel L, and Pete, Steve, uh, Keith G, JJ H, Abby H, Derek N, Jonathan A, Mark, Mary H, and Susanna F. A virtual head nod to you all. And Patreon Roulette. Random shout out to someone on the emergency medicine tier. Shout out to Dan for being a patron. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. And thank you all for listening. We're your hosts, Will and Kristen Flannery, also known as the Glockham Flaggins. A special thanks to our guest, Dr. Sarah Boston. Our executive producers are Will Flannery, Kristen Flannery, Aaron Corny, Rob Goldman, and Shanti Brook. Editor engineers, Jason Fortiz. Our music is by Omer Binsby. To learn about our Knock Knock High's program disclaimer and ethics policy, submission verification and licensing terms, and HIPAA release terms. I still can't. I can't choose which of those is my favorite. Mm, it's a, it's a tough call. It's like so, choosing between your children. Sometimes it's the submission verification and licensing terms, but sometimes I kind of get tired of them. I was like, Neil, I'm gonna just check out the program disclaimer and ethics policy. Yeah. Yeah. It's just. It's like. It's. It's. Sometimes it's just hard. They're equally wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. They really are. Uh, you can go to glockandflecken.com or reach out to us at knockknockhighhuman-content.com with any questions, concerns, or fun medical puns or limericks. Like the one I, I botched explaining today. Mm-hmm. I You know, I, I read that limerick today. I was like, this is a terrible limerick. <laughs> and and I, I was like, why did this person send me this limerick? And then I found out, no, this is actually an AI-generated limerick. And that was the point. There you go. Man, you got I there in the end. that up. Knock Knock High is a human content production. Thanks for watching the episode. You can find more on that playlist over there. If you prefer to listen or you just had your eyes dilated, you can binge full episodes wherever you get your podcasts or join the party over on Patreon where you get early access episodes, hang out with us, get lots of exclusive bonus content. Hope you subscribe, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think.